clean with me videos. They're a thing and we've been doing that thing since 2013. In this video, we've actually compiled some of our favorite clean with me videos to motivate and inspire anyone to clean just about anything in their homes. Now, when we put a clean with me video together, we don't only want to show you the cleaning, like I'll get in there, I'll get down and dirty and I'll show you how to do it. But I also like to teach you. So when you're watching, if you listen, you'll hear some of the cleaning tips and tricks that I like to drop in because I not only want you to see how it's done, but I really want you to learn so that when you do it yourself, you can do it faster and better. So without further ado, let's get right into some clean with me stuff. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like to use clean with me videos to motivate you to clean. The date was March 19th, 2013. That was when we first launched our clean with me bedroom video. It was the first time we introduced the three wave system to everybody in the clean my space community. And really it was the first in-depth clean with me style video that we did. Since then we've done tons of iterations on it, but that format has worked really well. Our audience loves it and we love doing it. So let's check out how to clean a bedroom. You've asked me to show you how I clean my room. And guys, seriously, you should know better because my room is always perfect, always. I'm Melissa Maker and I live in the cleanest house in the world. But the reality is my room does get messy, really messy. So due to overwhelming popularity, I am here today to answer one of our most asked questions. How do I clean my room? So whether it's your bedroom, your living room, spare room, back room, front room, or even your dorm room, I've got a somewhat quick, somewhat easy routine to clean almost any room in your house. It takes work, but I guarantee you, this is all you need to know. I've actually taken a chunk off of my company's 59 point checklist that details how to clean a room. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a URL to visit so that you can have your very own room cleaning printable that will remind you of everything we covered here today. I have three rules about cleaning and trust me, these rules will help save you so much time. So listen up. Rule number one, you need to be in the right headspace. I don't know what you need to do to get there, but if I'm not in the mood for cleaning, I literally waste time doing everything else but cleaning. Rule number two, use the right tools and the right products and have them with you while you work. And the final rule is method. Have a plan. And that's why I'm gonna share my checklist with you so that you know what to do and in what order to do it. Here's what you'll need to clean your room. Microfiber cloths for dusting, cleaning, and polishing. I'd say to have three. Glass cleaning cloth for mirrors and windows, if you feel like cleaning your windows. A vacuum, and of course a mop as well if you have hardwood floors. And for cleaners, you'll need an all-purpose cleaner, a glass cleaner, you can throw in a disinfectant for your point of contact, and a garbage bag and a bag for recyclables. You'll also want a mop pole and a hair elastic, I'll explain why later. And fresh linens if you intend on making your bed, or at least strip your beds, wash your sheets, and then put your linens back in your room so you're ready to go. Now, you're gonna have stuff in your room that I don't have in mine and vice versa. So if you have something that requires special attention, get the right product for it. Otherwise, the list I just shared with you should suffice. You're going to do three circles or waves around your room. The first wave is going to involve picking up garbage, putting things where they belong, AKA tidying, and quick organization. That way, when you move on to the second wave, you'll already be working in a tidy space. The second wave involves the actual cleaning. So, you know, dusting, wiping, disinfecting your points of contact. And the final wave involves vacuuming, taking out the garbage and double checking your work to ensure that you haven't missed anything. Alrighty, here it is. My bedroom in all its messy glory. This is what it really looks like after not being cleaned for about two weeks. For your first wave and all waves, you need to pick a starting point and then you work clockwise from there. I'm going to make my door the start point or 12 o'clock. I'll tidy the room here, so I'm going to work section by section as I go along. And I'm finding things that need to be 
thrown out, put away, and organized. If you find something that doesn't belong in your room, leave it just outside your door or place it in a laundry basket. That way you can deal with it once you're done cleaning. A great tip I always use is that I line my items up parallel or perpendicular to the edges of my furniture. You can bring your garbage bag around with you and toss things in as you go along. You can throw dirty clothing on the floor in a pile and clean clothing on the bed. That way you can quickly fold it before you move on. To round out the first wave, finish up by folding those clothes on your bed and then putting them away before you move on. Take a microfiber cloth and affix it to the mop hole using a hair elastic. Now I'll walk around the entire room cleaning away any cobwebs I encounter along the way. To tackle dust bunnies, I'll run the cloth over all of my baseboards as well. Using the same 12 o'clock starting point, we're going to start wiping everything from top to bottom including frames, mirrors, lamps, tabletops, fingerprints, points of contact, and everything else in between. I'm using an all-purpose cleaner for all of the items I'm cleaning, and like I said, you can use a disinfectant, but you'll have to budget more time since the disinfectant will need to sit for a few minutes in order to work effectively. Slowly but surely, we work clockwise around the room. Stay focused and don't get distracted. I find it really helpful to have my phone off and some good music on. That really helps. Final wave, y'all. Take all that stuff that doesn't belong in this room out of this room. And you can deal with that after you're done cleaning. The final wave involves nothing more than a good vacuuming. This is the secret sauce to a really clean looking room. Your room doesn't need to be perfectly clean, but if you have nice vacuum cut lines on your floor, you will fool the masses. not too shabby at all. I love having a clean bedroom. It seems to make me sleep even more soundly. Only I could get a better pillow. The best part, it took less than 30 minutes using my three wave approach and I didn't get distracted. Here is a side by side comparison of my room before and after. Good work. It feels like a pretty newbie editing mistake even though Chad had been editing our videos for a few years at this point but he did mix up the before and after. You might've noticed that when you watched this video. And I also realized how much I missed those cool honeycomb earrings. But anyway, they are part of my past. I am good with it. Moving right along, let's check out the Clean With Me bathroom video that we put out about a month after the bedroom video. It's got the same level of detail and I really, really drill down that three wave system teaching how to clean a bathroom. We'll use the same three-wave approach that we used in the bedroom cleaning video. Wave number one. This involves tidying, organizing, and pre-treating the toilet and shower. Wave one is pretty straightforward. I'm putting dirty laundry and towels in a laundry pile, scattered items are going away, I'm throwing garbage out, and organizing as I go along. If you find a misplaced item that doesn't belong in the bathroom, just leave it by your door. You can deal with it later. The other important part of this wave is pre-treating surfaces like the toilet and shower tiles, since these need dwell time to break down the buildup. So I'm pre-treating with my bathroom cleaner. Next, on to wave two which starts by doing high dusting using a mop.
toilet and you'll see the link at the end of this video. Now that the toilet is done, off come the gloves. Next, let's clean the shower and tub. I'll respray the tiles and scrub using an S pattern. For tile and grout that needs some cleaning, I'll use a bit of baking soda and a cleaning toothbrush to scrub the grout lines. Good thing I didn't wear low rise jeans today. <laughs> Then we rinse the tile walls. I'll use my shower head and then dry the tiles with a squeegee. To learn how to clean your shower, watch our in-depth shower cleaning video. Following this, I'll spray the tub down and use some baking soda to add extra abrasion. I'll scrub it from back to front using my double-sided non-scratching sponge and then I'll rinse it and dry it. Remember to polish the chrome with a dry cloth as well. Now I'll wipe and replace all of my shower items. I'll finish up wave two by cleaning my bathroom sink. I leave it till the end just in case I need to use any other water during the cleaning. That way I don't need to re-clean it. Congrats, you made it to wave three. We'll start this wave at our starting point and work our way around the room wiping all points of contact using a disinfectant. We'll also use this opportunity to change the garbage. And our last job is cleaning the floor. I find it best to clean by hand. Using a mop is kind of a waste of time for such a small space. When you use a cloth and some water with a little bit of vinegar, you'll clean the floors beautifully and you can collect all hair and debris. Moving on to a space that feels a little bit easier than cleaning the bathroom is the living room. But we decided to make this particular video a little bit more challenging by really cluttering up the space because some of the feedback that we were getting in those early days of making clean with me videos was that, you know, our spaces were relatively clean and what would it be like to clean a really dirty or messy space? So we made this particular video focused a lot on the first wave or the tidying slash organizing slash decluttering wave because I really wanted to show you guys exactly how to deal with all of that mess before you actually get right down into the cleaning. So let's check it out. A laundry basket for misplaced items a garbage bag and a recycling bag, microfiber cloths, flat weave and regular, some all-purpose cleaner, and a vacuum with a brush attachment. We'll be using our three-wave system of cleaning and wave number one is the decluttering wave. What I'm doing here is working my way around the room in a clockwise motion picking anything up and putting it where it belongs or putting it in the laundry basket, garbage or recycling bag. And I'm just basically tidying the space up so that I can prepare it to be cleaned, which is coming up in wave number two. I'm lining items up parallel and perpendicular. That makes it look a lot tidier. And now that things look neat and tidy, we'll move on to wave number two, which is the actual cleaning wave, where we'll dust, polish, disinfect, and wipe things down. Again, I'm working clockwise around the room, working from top to bottom. That way, I'll cover every area and I won't skip anything. For the TV, I'm using a flat weave microfiber cloth and a little tiny bit of liquid. Remember, you don't have to clean everything during this cleaning, but if you notice something that's dirty and needs some attention, this is your time to do it. And now for the third and final wave, my least favorite wave, vacuuming. This week, I'm going to vacuum my pillows and other soft surfaces when I was cleaning a few days back, I vacuumed my upholstery. I don't need to get crazy up in here, I'm just doing what I need to do.
Now that I finished vacuuming the pillows, I'll take a second to fluff them up and put them on the sofa neatly. That way the room looks nice and welcoming. And just because I feel like it, I'm going to vacuum my ottoman today too. All right, now we'll tackle vacuuming the floor and I'm going to move any big pieces of furniture out of the way. By the way, watch how much Molly and Paisley love when I vacuum. To make the carpet look nice and neat, I break the room up into three sections and I work from left to right using what I call the W pattern and we have a video on how to vacuum properly. The room looks fabulous, but there's a little bit more work to do. I've got to put those dirty dishes in the kitchen and deal with them. And then I have to put any of those other items back where they belong. Well, taking a look at this room, it was well worth the 20 or so minutes I spent actually cleaning it. And this room looks so warm and welcoming now. And you guys saw me do it. It wasn't anything overly complicated. It was just being systematic and being organized. And with all that, the room now looks amazing. So that should explain how to deal with some clutter. And another space where we often experience clutter is the closet. So that's why I'm gonna take you into our closet cleaning video. I brought Chad in to help me do this particular video. And back in the day when we first started doing these, YouTube, like the trend was to make much shorter videos. I never liked that because I always felt like I was missing a lot of the details that I really wanted to share because I learn when I understand details better. But anyway, these short videos, or shorter I should say, still do have value. And you guys can see how Chad and I tackle our closet. What's up Clean My Space Nation? This week we're making a Clean With Me video and we're tackling a long overdue project here at the CMSHQ, our bedroom closet. It's been three years since we cleaned it last, so let's get to it. Here's what you'll need. A couple of bins. I'm using one for clothing which will be donated and the other for clothing to pass along to family and friends. A vacuum cleaner, not my favorite tool. All-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth. Yep, that's a maker's cloth. A garbage bag. A large flat surface. I'm using my bed. And if possible, some help if you can get it. The first phase is pretty straightforward as it only involves one step, removing absolutely everything from our closet and placing it on or around the bed. We stripped our closet bare, including all of the clothes that were sitting on the top shelf, the clothes that were hanging, and the clothes that were in the drawers. We also moved all of the other stuff that was clogging up our closet. Blankets, suitcases, shoes, shoe boxes, old purses, hampers, and even my wedding dress. Just about everything. Let's move on to wave two. This one shouldn't take very long, but it is important that this gets done before bringing anything back into the closet. We're going to spray and wipe all of the horizontal surfaces and give the closet a good vacuuming. Well, Chad will. We'll also throw away any garbage at this time. All right, it's time for wave three, and it's also time to call upon patience and persistence and all the mental energy you can summon as this wave is going to take quite a while and might even get a little overwhelming. You are going to touch each and every piece of clothing on your own and decide whether it stays or whether it goes. 
If you haven't worn it in six months, it goes. If it was a gift, and even though you never wear it and feel obligated to hang on to it, it needs to go. If you keep passing it over in the closet, say bye-bye. This is your chance to hold yourself accountable for the state of your closet. I was trying to slim my closet space requirements by about 40% and I think Chad parted with about 60% of his wardrobe. Congratulations. This is great because we get a more tranquil, less cluttered closet, getting dressed is a lot easier, and all of our clothes get a chance at a second life with someone who might actually wear them. We're using this opportunity to purge hangers because less clothes means less hangers. So we've kept the nicest one and parted with the others. Look at this for huge bins of clothes that are going to a better place. And that leaves me with one last decision, and I think I might need your help with this one, CMS Nation. This is my wedding dress, and I love it dearly. But I haven't worn it or frankly even looked at it in the last five years or so. I just love it, and I can't imagine parting ways with it, but I know that so many people donate theirs. So what do you guys think? Is it worth donating, sending it off to someone else, letting them have a happy wedding, or do you hang on to it for sentimental reasons? What do you guys guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Our closet looks so much better and has so much more space. It's going to be a much easier experience finding what to wear in the mornings. So doing a closet cleaning to me takes a lot of time, which is why I only do mine twice a year, fall, winter, and spring, summer. That's when I do a closet change out and that is when I clean my closet. And by the way, since moving into this new home, Chad and I have our own closets. They're small, but we each have our own. So I take care of my own space and he can do whatever he wants with his. And that actually feels pretty good. Now we're gonna move into a kitchen clean with me. I feel like I do this three times a week because it doesn't matter how much I clean my kitchen, I feel like it's always messy. So I'm gonna show you my method on how I tackle the kitchen. What's up Clean My Space Nation? It's time once again for another Clean With Me video. And this week we're talking about the kitchen, which is not only the most popular spot in my home, but according to the comments in our last Clean With Me video, it's the most popular spot in your home too. So let's get this kitchen clean. Here's what we'll need. Microfiber cloths, and we'll also be using some tea towels. Some all-purpose cleaner. A bin to separate recyclables. A broom. A mop, I'm using a flathead mop. A garbage receptacle. And of course, some music to make the whole process more enjoyable. To clean my kitchen, I'm using my famous three-wave system, starting with wave number one, which is decluttering. And that basically means I work my way around the kitchen, and you can see I start at one point the fridge, and I work my way all the way around so that I'm not skipping anywhere. And the goal here is to declutter. Get rid of garbage, put recycling in the recycling box, bring any of the plates, cups, or dishes over to the sink area to be loaded into the dishwasher, and making sure that my surfaces are clean and prepped for the next phase. I'm also going to take this opportunity to hand wash my blender and some of the other items in the kitchen that need a hand wash before I move on. And just like that, wave one is done. On to wave number two, which is the actual cleaning. So the wiping, the polishing, the disinfecting. And it's a lot easier to do once you have no clutter. As you can see, I'm starting at my same starting point, which is the fridge in my kitchen. And I'm working my way from top to bottom. So I'll clean the top of the fridge and then the bottom. Work my way over to the next section, start at the top, and work my way over to the bottom. That way, I'm not forgetting anything. 
Also be mindful of areas you need to pre-treat. Like for example, my stove top was super gritty. So I put product on there and I let it sit for a few minutes knowing that I'd be back shortly. Another thing I love to do is move any of the items over to the left. So that way I'm not placing them on a clean surface. Then I'll clean them over the floor and put them back where they belong. Now I'm cleaning the sink in the third and final wave because I keep having to go back to it and rinsing things. That's a really good tip. Oh, and don't forget to hydrate. This is a lot of work. Not all cabinet fronts or areas in the kitchen need to be cleaned each time. With the glass doors, you can see, I'm just checking them for spots, wiping them where I need to, and then moving on. Wave two, out of the way. And finally, wave three, which I'm going to do in three steps. The first one is cleaning the sink. I'm not gonna need it anymore, so now is the perfect time to give it a good scrub. I have a video dedicated to the art of cleaning a sink, and I'll link that down below for you. Next, I'm going to remove everything off the floors because I am sweeping it to get rid of all the crap that I threw on the floor during phase one and two. Logically after sweeping comes mopping and I'm working my way from one part of the room back to the other so that way I don't forget a spot. Now that the floor is dry I'll put the rug back and then get rid of garbage and recycling. And that my friends is the end of wave three and my kitchen is officially clean. You'll notice in the last kitchen clean with me video I did not clean inside the kitchen cabinets we didn't have a pantry back in that house. So I didn't do any of the cupboards or cabinets because I felt like that was a separate job. But then a couple of months later, we decided we were gonna do a video on that topic alone. So in this video coming up, I show you how I clean inside kitchen drawers, cabinets, and cupboards. And trust me, if I had a pantry in that house, I would have shown you how to clean it too. Okay, serenity now. My kitchen cupboards, we have a bit of a situation on our hands here. Like I tried my best to keep up with all things cleaning, but even messy kitchen cupboards happened to me. So this week I figured I would do a clean with me kitchen cupboards. Here's what you'll need. A couple of microfiber cloths. Might I suggest makers of microfiber cloths? At least one bin, all purpose cleaner, a step ladder, Water, you're gonna get thirsty, trust me. And music, hello, and good dance moves, obviously. Now I'm gonna clean this side of the kitchen because it is in need of help, but this side of the kitchen is totally fine, so I'm not doing that. We'll start with the upper cupboards, and to do this, I'm going to clean off my counter because I'm going to need every inch of counter space to make this all happen. I'm gonna grab my step ladder and just start unpacking the cupboards. This one is where I keep my vitamins and supplements, water bottles, and kind of all organic things. Now the idea here is to spray down your cupboard, wipe it with your microfiber cloth, and then start sorting through the contents of the cupboard. So here you're looking for anything that you don't use or you're getting rid of, and also anything that's expired. There were things in here I honestly didn't even know I had, so I'm glad that I went through and did this. I'm lining all my vitamins up, don't judge me guys, I'm, I'm healthy. I see a naturopath, it's all good. This cupboard above my sink just needed a quick wipe. It's where we keep our microfiber cloths. Now here, this is kind of the pantry area. So I have all of my dry stuff, my canned goods. This one does get a little bit overwhelming. There were a lot of old expired things in here. Kind of gross. Anyway, it gave me the opportunity to consolidate a few food items, which tends to happen when you go through and do this cupboard cleaning routine. So now that it's all clean, I'm just gonna replace everything. I like to put everything in an organized manner. That way it's easy to find what I'm looking for. I also like to face all the cans outward, kind of fulfill my fantasy of working in a grocery store, which I never got to do. And the cupboard above the stove, nothing really, so I'm just giving that a wipe. This is where all of our old plates go to die. There was a big stack I needed Chad to come in and take that for me. 
Now these are the sentimental stuff that we keep here in the top left. So I'm not really gonna touch that, but everything else I pruned and I'm just putting back the stuff that we actually used. We got rid of a lot of things. Now these two cupboards here is where we have Chad's stuff. You'll see the famous taco kit from previous videos if you wanna learn more about that. There's a story. Anyway, I'm sorting through these items. Chad has this crazy habit of like eating a bag of something and leaving three items in it and then putting it back in the cupboard. And that's pretty much what I've been sorting through. Oh, and I love these, so I took a little snack break. I had to get a second bin, which is a good sign, it means I'm making some really good progress here. And I'm going into his other cupboard. Again, I'm just sorting through items. There were a lot of duplicates and things that were kind of ancient and expired. So those almond milks, perfect example, 2015. So I'm just putting everything back, organizing it and putting things in cupboards where they belong if they were misplaced. This cupboard above the fridge, do you guys keep your serving pieces in there too? I feel like that's kind of a universal thing. Let me know in the comments down below what you keep in that cupboard. Okay, good work. We finished the top cupboards. Now it's time to get to the lower cupboards and the drawers. This is a little bit of a messier job. I'm switching out my microfiber cloths. Got a clean one to get cracking. Now I keep my spices here and some paper towels and stuff. I'm gonna sort through my spices, see which ones I don't use anymore, which ones might be a little expired. And I'm going to use paper towel to wipe down these drawers because spices tend to leave stains on cloths, and I don't want to mess my cloths up. Just going to line everything up as neat as I can. The Lazy Susan is where I keep cooking vessels and small appliances. I use everything in there. I'm pretty good about pruning things out, so I didn't actually have to get rid of anything. Just going to put everything back nice and neatly. This drawer gave me a lot of anxiety. It's my spice drawer, like my big boy spice drawer. I also keep my saran and all that kind of stuff in there, paper products. And then at the bottom is where I keep salt, pepper, oil, vinegar, honey, that kind of stuff. So this cupboard is a messy deal. I have a little liner there, so I'm actually gonna clean that with soapy water. There were definitely stains from turmeric and like gloopy syrup and stuff. So just gonna give that a little bit of a treatment. And again, I'm going to spray everything down with all-purpose cleaner and give it a good wipe with paper towel. See how grotty that one was? Gross. Put that liner back and now it's time to put the bottles back at the bottom. I'm giving them all a quick wipe because the bottoms of the bottles definitely get gross. So it's important to make sure that those are mess free. And I'm trying to give a little semblance of organization here, so do your best. Again, consolidating some pepper there. Exciting times, I know. Now I'm just lining up all of my plastic, tin foil, other paper products. And now it's time to put the spices back. So I'm going through and I'm kind of smelling everything and examining it, seeing if it's worth keeping or if it's something I should get rid of. This is also a perfect time to run a little list of anything that you notice you're out of or if there's something that's expired and you need to replace it. You can create a little grocery list and that way you'll never be short of what you need. Spices generally keep for six months to a year. So if you have something that's older, it's probably time to toss it. My utensil drawer, that also needed a little bit of a pruning, so I gave these little containers here a good clean out, then I wiped out the drawer, and I sorted through the items just to see what I did not need anymore, and those went in the bin. By the way, for those of you who are curious, my kitchen is an IKEA kitchen, and the little drawer dividers are also from IKEA. Now into my pots and pans drawer. This one was a little bit messy, but there wasn't anything in there that I really needed to get rid of. But I'm still glad I gave it a good cleaning. Wow. 
Same thing goes for this one. Just needed a bit of organization, but still, I gave it a good wipe down. It deserves a good wipe down. Everyone deserves a good wipe down. Now this cupboard can be terrifying. We keep ours in pretty good shape. We went through a period of time where it looked awful with our old kitchen, but in this new kitchen that we did a couple of years ago, we spent a lot more time ensuring it was organized. We use these little bins, that really helps. But it's still a good opportunity to go through and get rid of anything. I also love having the tension rod there because that definitely gives us a little bit of extra storage space. This is our junk drawer, so I'm gonna give it a good wipe down and sort through all of the items. Again, these little trays are from Ikea, super helpful. I'll give those a quick cleaning. Junk drawers in general are a little bit disorganized, but if you can do your best to go through, get rid of anything that you're not using or that's old, and replacing everything that you are keeping in a somewhat orderly fashion, you're doing your absolute best with a junk drawer. So good on you. This is my tea drawer which I'm very proud of. And a lot of the teas in there are caffeinated. I've been trying to stay away from caffeine. I find it makes me feel a little too jumpy and anxious, but I still love those teas, so I'm sort of hanging on to them in the event that I ever decide to have caffeine again. And I'm just giving all of my teas, you know, a little test to make sure they're still fresh and I still like them. I'm gonna throw out or give away anything that I don't want or that is not expired, and then everything that I want to keep, obviously I'm organizing in a nice fashion. And this is the drawer where I keep all of our random mixing bowls, shredders, salad spinners, that kind of stuff. I just got rid of one thing and moved on. So we got rid of two bins of stuff doing this job, pretty great accomplishment. Now I'm going to clean off the kitchen counter and replace everything back where it belongs. This part is great because I get to feel really good about the work that I've done and I know I'm like two seconds away from being finished. Well, there you go. You can see all of my clean cupboards. My kitchen feels so much better. This is something that you can do once or twice a year and it definitely makes your kitchen feel much more functional and cleaner. And it's always great to get rid of stuff that was cluttering up your cupboards. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you feel motivated and inspired to do the same thing. And since I get the feeling that you might ask for it, I decided to throw in a clean with me kitchen fridge video because that truly is a space that needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. And I am someone who does enjoy seeing a dirty fridge go to a clean fridge. So we figured, you know what? It's a perfect clean with me video and we're gonna throw it in right now. Well, yes, it's true. Our fridge is a mess. You guys had no problem pointing that out in one of our recent videos. There it is in all its glory. It needs some help. So this week I figured I'm going to show you how to clean your fridge. I'm going to do a clean with me style video and we are going to get this fridge looking the way it should. Here's what you'll need. Some all-purpose cleaner, some microfiber cloths, a recycling bin, and a garbage. All right, let's get to it. The first wave is kind of fun. You just sort of take everything out of your fridge. It's kind of like a trip down memory lane. Yeah, where did those pickles come from? Or, oh, that jar of salsa looks awful. Anyway, this was a great time. I kind of laughed at some things that were in the fridge. Couldn't believe I forgot about them, but all in all, it felt really good. I also find this a great time to look at some fruits and veggies that are about to, you know, hit the expiration point. I leave those out and I'll just cook with them that day. In fact, that afternoon I made some kale. It's kind of funny when you do this because you might find doubles in the fridge. Case in point, I found two jars of Dijon mustard and two containers of horseradish mayo. Not mine. There you go, all my fridge contents, no secrets here. And of course, you can see the fridge does get pretty grotty. And the crisper drawers, really, really not pretty. But this is real life, guys. This is what happens. In the second wave, we actually get to the hardcore cleaning. We'll deal with the food after. 
so we can put it back into a clean fridge. I'll grab my all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth and I'm just dousing the fridge here with the all-purpose cleaner. By the time I get to the shelves on the door, the stuff on the top shelf will have had a chance to loosen up. And for the crisper drawers, I'm actually removing them entirely, giving them a spritz so that way I can clean the area underneath. When you're doing this, be gentle. Your fridge components are designed to come out. You just have to be careful. Make sure you don't crack or break anything. We also have a video on doing a cleaning of the fridge where you remove all of the shelves, but I decided not to do that this time. Now that the product has had a chance to sit, I'm going to wipe everything nice and clean, making sure I get in the drawer. It's also important to get the underside of the shelf, especially if it's glass. Sometimes bottles that are tall or containers can graze the underside of that shelf and leave a grimy little streak of residue. Make sure you get the sides and the back of the fridge as well. It's so funny, it's such a simple thing to do, but it makes you feel so much better about your kitchen, just knowing that your fridge is clean. It's also important to make sure that everything is dry. So once you've wiped it clean, you wanna make sure it's dry because you don't want any mildew situations happening in the fridge. If you do encounter any difficult stains in the fridge, I didn't, but if you do, you can sprinkle a little bit of baking soda on top of the stain, spray some all-purpose cleaner, let that sit for a minute or two, and then give it a good scrub. Now one thing I did here, which I didn't show on camera, was I actually took the drawers to the sink and gave them a quick rinse because there were some little crumbs I couldn't get rid of, so you can do that if you like. Pop the drawers back in, get ready for reload. You see all that crap over there at the bottom corner? Yeah, that had to go. Looking pretty good, right? All right, wave three. We sort through the food, pick out the science experiments, look at any of the stuff that we haven't used in a while, but we'll start off with the fruits and veggies. And I like to line the crisper drawers with a sheet of paper towel. It's easy to replace and it helps absorb moisture and keep the drawer clean. So I'm just sorting through everything, picking out the stuff that I'm gonna keep. Yep, all that stuff goes back in. You don't wanna overstuff your crisper drawer either. I try to separate out fruits and veggies, but if it doesn't happen, that's okay. Now I'm just sorting through, checking expiry dates, looking at anything that I haven't eaten in a while or things that I'm not going to eat, things that I want to get rid of. I'm putting those on the stove and then everything that we're keeping I'm leaving on the counter and I'll organize that accordingly. Definitely some leftovers that needed to go. Now I'm just wiping the bottom of the jars that I'm keeping, getting rid of any of that buildup that might have, you know, happened over time, and then I'm lining them back up in the fridge nice and neatly. I actually like doing this job because then I know where everything is. And if I need to grab, say, the capers or the harissa, I know exactly where to look for it. It's not like buried somewhere random in the fridge. It's also a good time to consolidate anything. So if you have doubles, like I just did with my nuts, you can consolidate those, and that makes storage obviously more efficient in the fridge. You might notice I don't have baking soda in the fridge. I actually have a charcoal filter in there. Okay, now it's time to get rid of any of the food that you're going to be getting rid of. I'm squirting stuff in the garbage. Obviously the mayo, you can see my face. Oh, I hate mayo, it's so nasty. So that was a pretty unexciting part of the job. but. 
Don't just dump your jars in the recycling bin. You gotta empty things out first. It's great not to put it down the sink. cat came in she clearly thought she could score but I made sure that didn't happen <laughs> Now for anything that had oil or grease in it, I poured that into a zippered bag and I discarded the zippered bag. Obviously I didn't want to put that down the sink. When I quit my job in 2006 to start my cleaning company, that was it for me. The corporate life was over and I was working from home. So I've been used to it. I've been doing it for a while. And Chad, well, according to his resume, he's been working from home since approximately 1902. So the two of us are pretty used to this working from home lifestyle and working together. And what that means is we really have to focus on keeping our offices clean and tidy and our work stuff separate from our home stuff so that it doesn't feel like we live in our office and we work in our home. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a clean with me office video because I feel like now more than ever, a lot of us are working from home and this will really help. Well, hello there. I'm here in Chad's office and I gotta tell you, it's looking a little bit, a little bit on the messy side got papers and pens and all kinds of stuff so I figured I would just do a quick clean with me video showing you how to clean up a desk we're gonna do a bit of cleaning and a bit of organizing here's what you'll need all-purpose cleaner electronics cleaner compressed air rubbing alcohol general purpose microfiber cleaning cloths. These are of course makers cleaning cloths and a glass and electronics cleaning cloth and a cleaning toothbrush, not for your mouth. Wave number one is clearing off the desk. You guys know I have a three wave process that I use and instead of doing it the way I normally do, I'm adapting it for a desk cleaning and I'm going to clear everything off this desk and do my decluttering on the floor. And by doing this, I'm going to expose Chad's entire desk so that I can actually clean it effectively for him. I'll leave some of the electronics on, but most of the other stuff is coming off. Now, even I make mistakes. I forgot to clean this stuff off over there on the left. Usually in my three-wave process, I always clean from the left to the right so that by the time I get to the right, there's nothing there, but you know, guys, even I'm fallible, so there you go. I was too lazy to unplug those electronics, so I just dropped them down the side of the desk. Okay, everything's clear. We're gonna get into wave number two, which is cleaning. So here I'm just spraying the desk down with all-purpose cleaner. I'm being careful not to spray any of the electronics. And I'm wiping using the S pattern. And if I'm cleaning something like this speaker, I'll lift it up and clean it over an area that hasn't been cleaned yet, like the floor or another part of the desk. I'm mixing up my electronics cleaning solution and this is equal parts water and rubbing alcohol. And you'll see that I'm spraying my cloth and then tapping it off on my hand. That's just to remove any excess moisture. And then I'll go and clean the monitor using the S pattern. Continuing along, working my way from left to right. Then I'm laying down a towel because I'm going to need the desk to clean the laptop, but I don't want to have to re-clean the surface. So this is a really good trick if you're short on space. So you'll see here I'm just spraying my electronics cloth with some electronics cleaner and I'm wiping down the front and the back of the laptop. I'm gonna use my cleaning toothbrush to get into those ports and remove any dirt or dust. Then open it up again and just give the monitor a good wipe down. Yeah, that monitor really needed some assistance. Now for the keyboard, tip up the monitor and give it a few good spritzes with 
your compressed air and then just use that dry toothbrush to brush between the keys and get any debris out. This way it'll fall on the towel and it'll be nice and clean. Then I just spray my cloth again and I give the keyboard and the mouse pad area a really good wipe. And now it's done. Next up, the lamp. I'm just going to give that a quick wipe too over the cloth. Next, the keyboard. Yeah, this was gross, like half a meal came out of this thing. So I'm tipping it up and then brushing it from top to bottom with my dry cleaning toothbrush. Then I'll spray it top to bottom with compressed air and everything kind of just falls out. Again, pretty gross experience, but worth it. And just wipe the keyboard down using your electronics cloth and your electronics cleaner. It's pretty simple. I'm going to move this cloth over to the other side of the table. And I'll give the mouse pad and the mouse itself a really good wipe down. Nothing special, just using that same cleaning product. The mouse itself, you can use your cleaning toothbrush to get into those little crevices. You're going to see all of this gunk come out. It's kind of, it's gross, but again, very worth it. All of this stuff is worth it. You can handle it. You always want to brush down whenever you're doing this cleaning too. You never want to brush back in to your item. Always let everything fall down on that towel. I'm going to dust this plant and it's really simple. I just sprayed my cloth and I'm kind of supporting the leaves with one hand and giving them a quick little wipe whip wipe thing down with the other. I don't know what the move is called. Then I'll just use another cloth to quickly wipe the planter. And now these desktop accessories, I'm just doing the same thing, giving them a quick wipe down over that towel. Then I'll roll the towel up, I'll throw that in the laundry later, and put everything back on the desk where it belongs. Okay, the third wave is just final touches. So now that the desk is looking pretty good and clean, we just have to figure out how to get everything that I put on the floor back onto the desk. I'm gonna leave a lot of this for Chad to do. It is his office after all, but a few of the items I know he needs I'm gonna put back he has a lot of pens and stuff in that little container, so I'm going to make him downsize a bit. And I'm just going to, you know, I love pens, so I'm just going to do him the favor of picking out the good ones, putting them in the glass, and then he can kind of deal with the rest and figure out how he's going to do away with it. This is where he keeps all of his papers, so I'm just going to plop his papers in there. He's got to deal with that. I'm not going through his paperwork. Yeah, have fun. But for the papers that he does need to keep on his desk, we're going to use this little paper tray and I'll stick it right under his monitor. And that's it. His desk looks great. It's significantly less cluttered, it's much more organized, and it's going to allow him to do the work that he really needs to do. This didn't take very long, and honestly, he told me that it felt so great once it was done. I'm feeling pretty good, he's feeling pretty good. I hope you guys like this video. In 2017, my book came out. It's called Clean My Space, which shouldn't surprise you. The secret to cleaning better, faster, and loving your home every day. And in the book, I released a concept called Express Cleans at the beginning of each chapter. So, you know, we had a few chapters just talking about cleaning in general, and then we would have some chapters that targeted rooms specifically. So let's say we were talking about living room. At the beginning of the living room chapter, I had what was called the living room express clean. And that's why in this video, we demonstrated an express clean because we wanted to bring that concept to life. But because in my old house, our living room and dining room essentially were in tandem, we decided to do the two together. You will also notice that I am super prego at the time. My little child was just months away from making her debut into this world and I've never been the same and I have never cleaned more. So with that being said, let's go check out that video. Okay, Chad and I just got back from two weeks of traveling. Let me tell you, our house 
is a little bit upside down after we go out of town, especially for two weeks. So we needed to clean up this living room, dining room area, but we didn't have a lot of time because we had to get right back into work. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an express clean for the living room and dining room. If you have my book, or even if you don't have my book, at the beginning of each chapter, I go over an express clean. It's something that you can do if you only have a little bit of time, but you want maximum impact. So without further ado, Let's clean the living room and dining room. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like saving time on your cleaning. I always start by opening up the windows and just getting some fresh air flowing in, especially since we were away for a couple of weeks, the house needed some fresh air coming about. Also, I was about 26 weeks pregnant here and clearly wearing mom jeans. Okay, I grab a bin and this part I love because I can just clean up the mess. I start at my 12 o'clock starting point and I work my way around the room just collecting anything that doesn't belong. Those shorts were Chad's. Clearly, he needs to do some laundry. Now I like combining the living room and dining room together because the spaces in my home are connected and they're both pretty simple and straightforward to clean. Now, of course those glasses can't go in the laundry bin but do your best to put everything that does belong in the laundry bin in there and of course these items go in the kitchen so I'm just going to quickly move them in there. I like working my way around the room so that I don't ever skip a space. That is really important. That's why I always talk about that 12 o'clock. Now we'll do the scan and dust. So I have this little handheld broom, which is super handy. I can stick it in my back pocket and I work my way around the space, getting rid of any dust on any surfaces. This also gives me the opportunity to fluff up cushions, straighten things up. And I'm not doing a full cleaning here. I am just doing a touch up. So when I say a scan and dust, what I mean is scan with your eyes, find anything that's dirty and clean it. This isn't a full blown clean. This is just a touch up. Dining room chairs in my house always get crumbs on them. Don't ask how, don't ask why, it just happens. This little handheld broom is actually really handy. I will put a link to it down below. Just gonna spray down the dining room table cause you know, it always needs a spray down. Using the S pattern. And on my dining room table, it's wood. We just use our gentle all purpose cleaner with dish soap and water. And once the table's dry, I'm flipping up the chairs so that it'll give me easier access to the floor under the table when I'm cleaning it. As always, I love to line up my items in a parallel and perpendicular fashion. It's pleasing to the eye, it looks neat and tidy. Unless, of course, you have three mini pumpkins, in which case, you can make them look like a pyramid, it's cool. And now I'll just finish up with floors. Again, I'm not doing a full blown vacuum. I'm sort of cheating here and just looking for any heavily trafficked areas, any areas with crumbs, using the W pattern and my handheld vacuum just to get her done nice and quick. To clean my hardwood floors, I'm just using my hardwood floor cleaning recipe. I have a video link for it. I've got the recipe in the book. I'll put the link for you down below to that video. It's basically water, dish soap, a little bit of white vinegar. If you want to be fancy, you can throw some essential oils in there, give it a good shake, and you're all good. So I use a flathead mop, and I spray a little bit of the cleaner on the floor using a W pattern and working in the direction of the hardwood grain itself. That way it helps avoid streaking. And I learned this trick of flipping the chairs up onto the table when I started my cleaning company. It's just a much more efficient way to get the floors clean without having to rattle your furniture around. And that's it. See, it was easy. This took me 10 minutes. And the good news is, because I had a plan, I was able to tackle so much 
in so little time. It's really important to have your products and your tools at the ready so that you're not wasting time running back and forth, getting what you need. And also, like I said, having that plan, which is why the Express Clean is so helpful, You'll know exactly what to do in that short period of time and you can really get to it. Now, of course, I have to take the basket of stuff that I cl cleared out from the space and I have to put that away, but that will only take me a couple of minutes. Again, if I'm focused and diligent, I can get it done really quickly. Another video that we filmed while I was super pregnant was a clean with me basement video. Now this video came obviously just ahead of Riley being born and we were going through, I suppose we could call it that nesting stage where we were just trying to clean the house as much as we could in preparation of the seven pound, 15 ounce baby that was going to make her way into our life in the next month or so. But we had a lot of stuff hanging out in our basement that we did not need. So we kind of made it into this honey do list video, which was a series that Chad and I had filmed in and around that time. It was a lot of fun and it was mostly stuff that Chad was doing, but obviously I wanted to participate in the basement. I mean, I didn't want to participate in the basement cleaning, but in all good conscience, I couldn't not participate in the basement cleaning. So the two of us filmed this video uh, and it was a good thing that we did it because just a few months later, we decided to put our house on the market and move and that big purge that we did ahead of that sale of the house and also ahead of Riley coming into the world, you know, it really saved us a lot of time and it made a difference um, for all the things that had to come along with her and the move. So let's watch that video. Welcome to our basement, or at least the half of the basement that we are willing to show you. This is our laundry room and it has been featured in countless Clean My Space videos. There's another half to this basement, one which is much more dark and sinister. This is the one place in our home where we put everything that doesn't belong somewhere else. It's a cesspool of computers and electronics, video production equipment, mementos, paperwork, books and magazines. We even store some old furniture here, which never gets used. And over here on these shelves, yep, you guessed it, this is where we keep all of our cleaning products for making these videos. And over here is even more stuff. This massive pile of stuff represents all the products we get sent here at the Clean My Space HQ, and tucked behind is my art area where clearly no art can be made. Nothing much at all can be made in this basement. It started getting out of hand about a year ago and we've just never gotten around to fixing the issue. But with a baby on the way, my office is turning into a nursery and this basement is going to become my new office. So it's about time the basement got a little honeydew love. It's about time we cleaned out the basement. Let's kick things off by creating an area to temporarily hold the items before getting rid of them. There's going to be three areas to be exact, an area for items we are going to sell, an area for donations, and an area that we will be giving stuff to friends and family. We have a very special guest this Honeydew episode, world-renowned cleaning guru Melissa Maker, who also happens to be my wife, who also happens to be very pregnant, but very much wanted to help with this job and get as much stuff out of the basement as possible. So here she is. There's not much method to the madness. We're just trying to get rid of as much stuff as possible and to clear up as much room as possible. That's the primary goal down here, freeing up every available inch of space. Now onto the cleaning supply shelves. These were the Crocs that Melissa wore to the very first Clean My Space cleaning job 11 years ago. So that's pretty cool. We should probably hang on to those. These shelves have a lot of useful products, but indeed there's so much stuff on here that we no longer use and probably can be passed along to someone who can actually use what it is. It's a really big job, but as the saying goes, how do you feed an elephant? One bite at a time. Thank you. 
That's looking a lot better already. We parted with about 50% of the stuff. I'm sure we'll part with a little bit more as time goes on, but this is a great start. So you may be asking yourself, Chad, that's all well and good, but where's all of that stuff going now? Well, let me tell you. I did a bunch of research on the internet trying to find places that would accept cleaning supply donations, and guess what? There's actually quite a few options. Many women's shelters and homeless shelters will happily accept these types of donations. And I also learned that animal shelters are always in need of cleaning supplies. So that's what I opted for. We loaded up the car and made my way to the Toronto Wildlife Centre. They are the ones who take care of all of the wildlife in the greater Toronto area. All of the squirrels and foxes and birds that need any kind of help. They are the ones that take care of them. And they were very happy to accept the cleaning supplies we donated. All the non-cleaning supply stuff was donated to a local value village later that night. All right, let's get back into the basement and pick up where we left off. I'm going to move my weights over to the other side of the room and then I am going to slim down some of my art supplies. I'm also going to get rid of these plastic drawer units that seemed like a good idea at the time but don't really serve any more purpose. So take care, so long, bye bye. Here's another little piece of CMS memorabilia. It's a sign from Melissa's book signing at Indigo from last year. So I think we may hang on to this, just find another place for it. But things I no longer should be hanging on to are all the boxes that my camera equipment came in. I hang on to this stuff for some reason, I'm not too sure why, and except for uh, like very, very few select boxes, I think we can safely part with 90% of these. And here's my hockey card, little known fact about Canadians, we all keep a hockey card in our basement for good luck. It's absolutely true. Next, let's move over to this area, which I use for photography. There's not much need to have this area always set up like it is right now, because I don't use it all that often, and it takes up a lot of space. So I'm going to break it down for now, and then I'll set it up only when I actually need to use it. I'm going to move the table to the far end of the basement. This way it's going to free up a lot of space for activities. And I'll give these shelves a little more attention, just free up a little bit more space and maybe consolidate some of the things to free up some room. I'm also gonna put this shelving unit to better use elsewhere. All right, it's time to move on to the other side of the basement. And we're gonna start with this shelf unit, which provides a lot of storage space, but unfortunately right now it's storing a lot of stuff that we just don't need. Some of the stuff that definitely is going to be staying is some of the memorabilia that I have from my father. He was an exceptional man. I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below to his Wikipedia page, and you can learn all about the awesomeness of Don Reynolds, my dad. And this here is my dad's camera. It was the very first camera that I used to take pictures many, many, many years ago. So this is definitely staying. This is a shirt from about 10 years ago with the very first Clean My Space logo on it. 
All right, Clean My Space Nation. Now, I want your advice on something, and it's these magazines that I'm showing you on the screen right now. So Melissa or Clean My Space has been featured in a bunch of magazines, and for the first few years, we actually started collecting and keeping each one. But now they're just kind of kicking around. So leave a comment with what you think we should do with these magazines. These chairs have been with me personally for 15 years now, and as sad as I am to see them go, it is about time to, to move on from them. And now we're in the home stretch, so let's just clear out the rest of the crap from this side of the basement. Maybe this wasn't the most exciting, fun, entertaining, or glamorous episode the Honeydew List. There was no painting, there was no new furniture, we didn't buy anything new for this space. We were literally just using this episode to get rid of as much stuff as possible in our cluttered basement so we could have a bit of a clean canvas to work with. But after a little hard work and a lot of time, we have now freed up enough floor space and it looks great in here. There's so much more room and there's so much more room for activities. I think I'm finally ready to start planning out what my whole office situation is going to look like now that I have this clean canvas. I also want to use part of this space to spend time with my daughter. So I want a big open play area that we can play in. And now we're a lot closer to that becoming a reality. Sometimes things happen behind the scenes. Actually, pretty much all the time things happen behind the scenes that when Lucas is editing our videos, you never end up seeing. Well, in this video coming up, it's a clean with me car video. When we first started shooting the video, I was wearing Birkenstocks, which was not appropriate footwear for this particular cleaning video. And I drive an SUV, so I kind of hoisted myself up with one foot and then I lost my footing. I slipped and I hit my shin really hard. It was probably one of the most painful injuries I've ever had prior to dislocating my shoulder. That was kind of a joke now that I've experienced this pain. But anyway, um, we had to pause shooting for a little bit. I needed to tend to this injury. I had a giant welt on my leg, but I persevered and we put out this car cleaning video. So you can see how it's all done. None of the quality was compromised. You guys will learn everything you need to know about cleaning a car. But yeah, I just want to tell you that little aside because that is one of the things that is an indelible moment in shooting that I will never forget. Sure, we've started making Clean My Space videos in 2011 and sure, you guys have been asking for a car cleaning video for the past five years. Well, guess what? We finally decided to get to it and my car is certainly garbagey enough to do it. So this week we are going to do a clean with me video and we're cleaning my car. Okay, let's do it. Here's what you'll need. All purpose cleaner leather cleaner, I'm using leather CPR, a cleaning toothbrush, glass cleaner, cleaning cloths, I've got regular and a flat weave, a handheld vacuum cleaner or a shop vac, depending on what you got, some paint brushes, a garbage bag, We'll start off with wave one, that's decluttering. We're just going to go through the car and pick up all the crap that doesn't belong there. And trust me, my car has quite a bit of crap in it right now. You can obviously separate out any recycling and garbage. 
I also recommend getting a little bin. That way anything that you are going to keep in the car, you can just pop in the bin. See that little copper bin? That's where I'm putting all my good stuff. Don't forget to check under your car seats. I found a lot of treasures under there. You can also remove any of those upholstered liners, like the little mats. Those can sit outside. You can sprinkle some baking soda on them. I didn't do that, but feel free to do it. It's a great way to deodorize. Also remember to clean out your trunk and remove a trunk liner if you have one. Moving right along, we'll go into wave two, which is the actual cleaning. For this wave, I'm going to use glass cleaner and my flat weave microfiber cloth, obviously a maker's microfiber cleaning cloth, to clean any of the glass surfaces in my car, including the sunroof, the windshield, and any of the windows. And I'm going to use a general purpose cloth with all-purpose cleaner to clean all other surfaces except for my upholstery, which I'll use a leather cleaner for. I'm not too picky about what I clean my dashboard with. If you're a real car fanatic, you might want to use an actual product to clean the surface. I think the all-purpose cleaner is perfectly fine and my car looks great. If you have a flat screen surface in your car, you can just use your flat weave microfiber cloth. It doesn't need any product on it. If it's a little bit damp, it's totally fine. This is where your paintbrush and makeup brushes are going to come in handy. These are perfect dusting tools to get any of those dusty areas clean. You know, those vents, they tend to get quite dusty. This is great. Make sure that whenever you're doing the dusting, you're always brushing out and down. You can follow that up with a quick wipe of a dampened microfiber cloth. Obviously, your instrument panel has some sort of plastic in front of it, so you can give the area that little seam of quick brushing and get rid of any of that extra dust and then clean the area with a dampened microfiber cloth. This is where the cleaning toothbrush comes in handy. There are going to be several crevices in your car where you'll see a seam and like a line of fine crap in there and really the only way to get it out is by giving it a good vigorous brushing with a cleaning toothbrush. Your steering wheel doesn't need much. I just gave mine a quick wipe with a dampened microfiber cloth. When it comes to the central console, obviously you can only do your best, especially if you spill coffee and other stuff in that cup holder. If your car allows, sometimes you can pull out the cup holder and put that in the dishwasher. That is the best way to clean it. Just a quick note about cleaning electronics in your car. If you're going to do this, make sure that you spray a cloth and wipe the electronic item instead of spraying that item directly. And if there is any crud in there, you can just brush it out with a cleaning toothbrush. I don't know about you, but yes, I eat in my car and I get crumbs in those little seams, but an easy way to get them out is to vigorously brush those seams with the cleaning toothbrush. Trust me, this is impressive. Brush well, drop it all onto the floor, and don't worry, you'll vacuum it up later. If you have leather upholstery in your car, all you need to do is apply leather cleaner to a sponge or a soft cloth, give it a good wipe down, buff it in a minute or two later, and your leather will look amazing. If you have upholstered seating in the car, you can spot clean any stains. As I said, sprinkle some baking soda on the seats to help deodorize. You'll vacuum it up in wave three. And if you really want to earn some extra points or your seats really need it, you can get them steam cleaned. Cleaning the interior window is quite simple. For me, it's really important because I always get like a greasy arm print on there because I'm always wearing cream on my arm, so it's really gross. Cleaning the door is pretty straightforward. Use your little paintbrush or your toothbrush where needed to get out any of that crud or dust. I use leather cleaner on the leather parts and of course all-purpose cleaner on the plastic parts. And make sure that you get into those side panels really well. If you really want to make a great impression, you can also clean the sides of your chair. And I also have this little divot between the door and my chair. That thing always gets covered in I don't even know what, so that needed a good cleaning. Once you're done the front, you'll just move right along to the back and repeat. If you have kids who ride in your car, the center console area in the back is probably going to be really filthy. Drinks, toys, I don't know what else. I don't have kids, you guys know that. But make sure that you spend a good amount of time on this area and also, I didn't do this because I don't need to, but if you are a parent, I recommend it. Use your finger to go between the area where the chair meets the seat. You will probably find several treasures, including french fries, Cheerios, Lego, feathers, sequins, 
and a whole bunch of other stuff. Cleaning the backs of the front seats are really important. Again, if you have little ones in the car, they are probably kicking it or spilling drinks on it. Make sure that you give this a good cleaning with an all-purpose cleaner. I've also seen plastic covers that you can put on the back of your seats. That might be a good idea if you find that these are getting dirty over and over and over again. Now we'll finish up wave two by cleaning the trunk. Even though I don't carry too much stuff around in my trunk, I swear to you, it always feels like I'm carting around farm animals when I'm cleaning it. I don't know what half this crap gets back there. It really just needs a good cleaning with all-purpose cleaner. Of course, I'm going to clean the back window with glass cleaner, and I'll clean the little side windows as well. I have a hatchback, as you can see. Clean your car accordingly. And of course, anything that falls onto the bottom surface, we will vacuum up really, really well. We'll finish things up with wave three. Certainly vacuuming is my least favorite task, but it is certainly important when you're cleaning the car. For this, I'm using a little handheld vacuum. If you have a shop vac, that's a perfect alternative. The fact that you can plug it in is great. You're not gonna lose battery power. It can also get into more areas. It tends to be a little bit stronger too. Plus you have some different attachments. You can use it wet, you can use it dry. So that would be a great consideration if you have to do a really big overhaul of your car. You can use the dusting brush to get any additional areas clean, like that console. If you want to give it one extra whirl, go right ahead. Another note about vacuuming in your car, because it is such a tight squeeze, sometimes I don't have the most success with vacuuming everything up. And this is where I just sing the Frozen song and tell myself to let it go. Now a quick note about vacuuming, I've done a thorough clean of my seats here so I don't feel like I have to re-vacuum them. If you feel when you look at your seats like you do, please by all means go ahead. And if you've sprinkled baking soda onto your upholstered seats, you are indeed going to want to vacuum that up. I'm mixing it up between the dust brush, the crevice tool, and the small vacuuming tool. Seriously, whatever fits is what I'm using. Now for vacuuming up the mats, I didn't use baking soda here, but again, if you did, you can give it a little shake and then you can vacuum it up. That's really going to help deodorize. Make sure that you vacuum your mats as best you can. Before you put your mats back in the car, make sure you give them a good shake. That way you're not taking any dirt from outside and putting it back into your newly cleaned car. If you have a tray in the back like I do, you can obviously give it a quick cleaning. I'm just using all-purpose cleaner here. Then it's time to put your car back together again. So anything that you are indeed keeping, you can reorganize it nicely into your vehicle. You can also put back any of those cup holders that you took out. And it's also a great time to remind yourself about anything you need to stock your car with. Obviously, being who I am, I recommend keeping a microfiber cloth in your car at all times. Then, finish things up by taking in your stuff. Put it where it belongs, whether it's the garbage or organize it back in your house, whatever you gotta do. But obviously, you can see my efforts were awesome. My car looks and feels so clean. I feel like a million bucks driving it. It's a good thing. A lot of the videos that you've seen today took place in our first home together. Chad and I bought that home in 2008 and we lived in it until we moved into this home at the end of 2018. So we shot a lot of videos in that old house and we've been slowly but surely building up some new videos in this new house. And one of the videos that we filmed at the end of last year was a whole 
home clean with me. We went end to end. We live in a bungalow. This floor that we're on right now is about 2,800 square feet. It's comprised of a kitchen, laundry room, slash garage entry, dining room, living room, big hallway with staircase, front entryway, which you see right behind. And then this hallway behind me is where all of our bedrooms are. So we've got our master bedroom, which has a bathroom in it. We have Riley's bedroom, a guest bedroom, and a guest bathroom, as well as two little closets. So this upstairs portion of the house is what we've cleaned. We did not show you the downstairs. That is for another time and place. Don't you worry, we've got some content coming for that. But now I'm gonna take you into the clean with me video for the entire upper floor of my house. This was kind of the moment where the reality set in. I realized that I had five hours of cleaning ahead of me and I just had to face the music and get to work. So the first thing that I like to do whenever I'm tackling a whole home cleaning is laundering linens because that requires a lot of time and it's one of those cleaning jobs that you can sort of set and forget. So I gathered the linens from our room and Riley's room, threw them in the wash, and then got down to work. Next up, I was dealing with clutter, which is part of wave one of my method of cleaning that I often talk about. Once the clutter was out of the way, I started wave two, which is cleaning and dusting and actually doing all of the work that's needed to put a nice shine and polish on the space. So I got a microfiber cloth, some all-purpose cleaner, and just worked my way around the room from top to bottom. Now in the bathroom, I didn't feel it was necessary to do a full cleaning. Our shower was in pretty good shape. The toilet had been recently cleaned. It was just more a matter of dealing with clutter and linens that were on, and towels I should say, that were on the floor, and just kind of putting all the little pieces back together. You can see my skincare routine has kind of gotten out of control over there, so it did require a bit of organization. I also find that with the white countertops, they often get messier quicker, so I find it a requirement to clean these more frequently than I did in my old bathroom, which was kind of like a laminate countertop that had like a marbly finish to it. I cleared out the towels. I also checked the garbage in case it needed to be emptied. Kind of kicked everything into the hallway, which is the central location where all of the stuff that needs to go somewhere else is going to go. And then I went into Riley's room. With her, the biggest mess that we see clothing and books, because she loves going to her bookshelf and pulling out her favorite books. Dinosaurs, Barnyard Dance, all the Sandra Boynton titles are really big right now, Sophie. So she likes to find those, pull them out, and then of course she makes a mess in the process. Now usually Chad and I are pretty good about having her help out with the cleanup, but in this case, we had let everything go, so it was my job to do the touch-up. Now, in her room, I also make sure to clean her change pad and the cabinet fronts, as well as the points of contact, because a lot of stuff happens in these little people's rooms, and that's what I really wanted to focus on. But the rest of the surfaces weren't really dusty or dirty. It was more, I was looking for those bacteria hotspots and giving those a good clean, and then just doing a general tidy, and once that was done, I was good. Now, this bathroom needed a lot of TLC. Not only is this Riley's bathroom where we bathe her every night, but it is also the guest bathroom, so it gets a lot of traction. First and foremost, I like to replace hand towels frequently, as well as regular bath towels. I find especially with hand towels, like if guests are coming in, I always like to have them not more than a day or two old, just because, you know, trying to keep germs to a minimum and being respectful of the people that come through our home, I wanna make sure they're always using something clean. In a bathroom, it's really important to pre-treat areas that are going to be cleaned well ahead of time so that you don't have to do a lot of cleaning or scrubbing later on down the line. Now with this tub, I find it doesn't get too dirty, but it does get some soapy residue because of, you know, Riley taking a bath in there just about every day. So I decided to give this a little pre-treater and then just give it a quick general wipe down. Again, it didn't need a scrub. It just needed more of a surface clean. Next up, I'm pre-treating the mirror here, just giving it a spray, doing the same thing with the counter. And you can see I'm kind of throwing everything on the floor. And this is how I like to roll with cleaning because I know I deal with the floors last anyway, so if anything goes on there, I don't worry about it too much. Using my famous S pattern with that flat weave microfiber cloth, 
getting a real nice shine on the mirror there. Same thing goes for the faucets, making sure they look great. You know, when people come over and they see watermarks on the faucet, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean it's dirty, but when there isn't anything there, ooh, it just looks so good. Now with the counters, I'm just doing a quick S pattern, eye level test, and then I'm moving right into getting the sinks clean. And again, the thing with doing these in-between cleans, even though there was a lot of stuff to clean up, it wasn't dirty, it was just more the mess that needed to be clean. Doing a wipe down with a microfiber cloth is sufficient. Moving right over to the toilet, you'll see, actually I get asked about this a lot. I took some paper towel with me because I don't like cleaning my toilets with microfiber cloths. I find, you know, I don't like the thought of that from a cross contamination standpoint, which is why I just like to use paper towel. And I always work from the top to the bottom, giving everything a good wipe. I also get comments sometimes about not wearing gloves, but I can tell you, I know who's been on this toilet. It doesn't worry me too much, so I was okay to not use gloves here. Plus, it's not like I went and you know baked a cake after this <laughs> without washing my hands. The other thing that's important when you're cleaning a toilet is to clean the areas around the toilet, which is why I sprayed and then started wiping using the S pattern. And this is actually how I like to clean the floors in the bathroom. I lovingly call it the Cinderella method or the hands and knees method. And you'll also see that when I'm done using my microfiber cloths, I just toss them on the floor when I'm cleaning the bathroom. And those are the cloths that I end up using to wipe the floors down. Now you might say, well, why wouldn't you just mop? Truthfully, I could, but then I'd have to bring an extra cleaning tool and this is just so easy and efficient. I also like that I don't have to sweep or vacuum. This not only gets up any dirt on the floor and stains, but it also gets hair. And that is the biggest challenge for me in the bathroom. Huh, okay, all done. Now, any of the clutter that I found along the way, I just threw in the hall. So it's at this point that I'm going to take everything with me and move out of that area and into the other half of the home. Just for full disclosure, I decided not to clean the guest room because it really didn't need a cleaning. So why am I gonna waste my time cleaning something that doesn't need it? I'm on to my second load of laundry now. I've got my linens in the dryer and I've just put all of the towels into the washing machine. Now, collecting myself and I'm starting a great room. So talking about the three wave system, I start in one part of the room, usually at a doorway, and I work my way around. The first thing that I do, the first wave, is tidying and organizing and getting rid of garbage or things that don't belong. So you'll see me just working my way around this room, kind of cleaning up, moving things out of the way, but not actually doing any cleaning. This is important because we'll cover the cleaning in the second wave. But the reason we do this first, or I do this first, is because it allows me to have a much easier time actually cleaning if I'm not dealing with clutter. So it was just a method that I came up with to simplify the flow of cleaning. It's also nice to do the three wave system because during the first wave, you can identify certain things that need attention for the second wave and make sure that you don't have to, you know, run out in the middle of your second wave of cleaning and grab, say, a vacuum or another cleaning tool. You've got everything there and you know what's required. Now these leather couches, I'm not actually cleaning with product. I'm just using a dry cloth to give them a quick dust. Next up, I grabbed my flat weave microfiber cloth. This is dry and I'm just using the S pattern to give my TV a quick wipe down. We love using flat weave microfiber cloths, cleaning electronics because it means we're not going to get any scratches on our surface. One of Riley's recent obsessions is stickers and cleaning stickers off the floor has become somewhat of a part-time job around here. So the easiest way to deal with them, at least that I've found, is just to quickly moisten them with a little bit of water or all-purpose cleaner. Then I grabbed a scraper. If you don't have one of those, you can use the dull edge of a butter knife or an old credit card and just gently work your way back and forth until that sticker comes up. I find this job annoying, but I also know how much Riley loves stickers. So I try to find balance. I know you probably think we had 25 people over by the looks of it, but no, these are all our shoes. They just didn't get put away. So again, part of my job, starting off with just tidying, getting clutter out of the way, and then priming the space for the actual cleaning that will take place during the second wave. And if you're curious, hey, what happens in the third wave? It's all floors. So we'll get to that at the very end. 
One cleaning tip, something you might see me do, is whenever I clean something on the wall, I like to support it with my non-dominant cleaning hand. This is just a habitual thing that I've learned over the years as a professional cleaner. That way, if something isn't installed properly on the wall, you don't have to worry about it coming crashing down. The dining room is kind of like an office for us here. It's where we all meet as a team and where orders and Amazon boxes end up going and microfiber cloth samples. So yeah, this room can get a little overwhelming at times. I had quite a bit of clutter to clean up in here, but because the room doesn't get used too frequently for its primary purpose, which is dining, I didn't have too much work to do aside from just cleaning the floors once all of this reorganization and tidying was all done. The stink face is real. This kitchen, it was in rough shape. Like there were meals that were just left on the table and not even tidied up. I am, I'm actually not embarrassed to show this to you because I know that this happens in homes all over the world. But yeah, this was not our proudest moment. So as always in the kitchen, whenever I feel overwhelmed, the first place to start is always, always, always the dishwasher. I make sure that it's unloaded so that I can start loading up the dishes because to me, once the dishes are out of the way, then I can really get down to business. One of the habits I learned during my waitressing days was to consolidate as much as I could. So stacking plates, getting all the food on one plate just makes things a lot easier for transporting around the kitchen and for scraping food into the compost bin. So if you haven't tried that before, you can give that a try the next time you have a major kitchen cleanup to do. Since I had so many things that had to be cleaned, I decided to hand wash a lot of items because I didn't want them to wait until the next load. Plus, some of them were questionable. Like, you know, you have those items and you're like, should I put it in the dishwasher, should I not? I knew the majority of these I should hand wash, but when I'm super lazy, sometimes they end up in the dishwasher. Anyway, I decided to just go full force and I hand washed everything. A great thing to do when you're hand washing is to also order your items from cleanest to dirtiest. So that way your sponge uh, doesn't get dirty right off the bat and you can clean your dirtiest stuff at the very end. My waffle weave dish towels really came in handy here and so many people have commented to us over the years and have said, why are they so big? Well, they're big because when you have a lot of dishes to do, you don't want a small, little, insignificant dish towel. You want something that's gonna be able to handle the job. So finally, once the dishes were done, I could tackle the quote unquote clutter in the kitchen. I was able to get rid of some recycling and this yellow pan here, I actually pre-treated while I was doing some of the other work so I wouldn't have to scrub as much or work as hard with cleaning. That's why I always tell you pre-treating is key. And the funny thing is, it's not that I've really done any cleaning in the kitchen per se, aside from handling the dishes. And you can see it already looks so much better. So if you don't stay on top of the dishes, man, it can really get you down. Next up, and this is just part of my regular kitchen cleaning routine, I will spray all surfaces in the kitchen, horizontal surfaces, so the dining, dining room table, the kitchen table, and all of the countertops, I just give those a nice spray. And then by the time I get to the last place to spray, the first place that I've sprayed is ready to be wiped down. The product has had enough time to work, it started to break things down, so I have to do significantly less work here. Cleaning the sink is one of the last things that I do and I love throwing a bit of baking soda in there just to add that scouring power and it really makes such a difference. I get a nice shiny clean sink and then to really put the sparkle on, I polish it up and it looks wonderful. The third and final wave of my three wave system, which makes perfect sense because it's a three wave system, is taking care of the floors. So I'm just using my stick back here. I've got my different attachments going and that way I can take care of all the different areas in the space. At this point, I'm also looking to see do the baseboards need anything? Do any of my vents need any extra attention? And that way I can give it to them, but I'm not you know, doing all of the baseboards or all of the vents. I was more eyeballing to see what was in need and then if I noticed something, at that point I would do it. Getting the linens out and remaking the bed was pretty much the last thing I had to do aside from taking that towel load and putting that in the dryer. But you know what? I've done enough. I think someone else can handle making the bed, at least for today. And to Chad's credit, he makes our bed every day because he sleeps in later than I do and he does a real good job. Keep up the great work, Chad.
So you've seen my house go through several iterations. I am personally embarrassed by many of the design and fashion choices that we have made over the years, but I'm over it because we as people evolve and I am open to that. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what do you think of the Clean With Me style video? Do you like it? Is it motivating? And if you do like it, let me know in the comments what Clean With Me video you would like to see next. Or is there a room or a space or a thing that I haven't cleaned yet that you would like to see me clean? Let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. We are all at Clean My Space and our microfiber products are over at makers.clean. Now, if you really love this cleaning motivation style video, you will probably love our decluttering videos too. This one has about 60 items that you can declutter from your house right now. So if you're on like a cleaning kick, this is a good thing for you to check out. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.